Hello everyone, in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to properly visualize geometry nodes. The main thing I see when people begin working with geometry nodes is how do I see what's going on. In this tutorial I will show you how using the store named attribute node. So without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's add in a new icosphere and let's add in a new geometry node. Let's go and view that. So what we want to do first is input the store named attribute node, just like this. Let's put it in here. Now what this node does, it'll store the data, whatever you put into this socket right here, and preserve it that you could use it later on in the node tree, but also in the shader editor. Allow me to demonstrate. So let's use a random value node and hook it into here and give it a name. I'll label this one A for attribute. So now that we have this, let's go into the shader editor and make a new shader, just like that. And now let's input an attribute with the name A. Another little tip, you could see which attributes you could use in the shader editor by looking at the internal depend dependencies, as you can see here. Right here, A is present. So let's go and view that. As we can see, we could see there is a random value at each point on this face, or each point on this icosphere. But we could switch that to face, or edge, or face corner, spline, and instance as well. But I'll just use face for now. So now that we have this, how do we use this further along down the node tree? Well, that's also fairly simple. Let's go and use an extrude mesh node, just like this. As we can see, uh, it's extruding the mesh, but not according to our values here. The gray parts are not extruded less than the white parts. So let's go and input a named attribute, just like this, and also select the attribute A. And if we feed this into here, we can see that boom, the white parts are extruding more because their value is higher, and the gray parts are extruded less because it's lower. So there we go. That's basically the entire concept behind this. There's also another good way to demonstrate this. So let's go and add in, actually I'll control Z that, but we could also give this a color. This won't affect the extrude part, but if we go and switch this to like a uh, vector and switch this also to vector, and we plug this in here, we could see that our extrusions now have color because ve vectors store three values, which could be RGB, while floats store only one value, which is black and white. So that's another useful tip. We could also animate this. So let's go and just add in a noise texture, just like this. This is a little tangent, but it could still be useful. Using a random value, let's set this to one dimension of noise. If we hook this into here now, Let's set this back to float for simplicity's sake. As we can see, everything's here at once, uh, all one value. But if we hook up a random value into it, we can see that this is randomized. Let's set this to something like 10 or 20. Now, if we want this to be animated, let's go use a math node and set it to hashtag frame for the time divided by, which is just a slash, and let's do 50. Now, as we can see, this is moving a bit fast, but we could just change the scale to about two and that'll be good. But as we can see now with an animated value, we could see the changes happen in real time and it looks quite nice. Whenever these go out further, they turn white because the value is being driven by that quote unquote color. And also in the shader editor, it's all synced up, which is very useful for shaders. So if we want, we could go and use a color ramp and switch it so that uh, at the bottom, they'll be black, but at the top, they will be like blue or red. So I think, I think blue looks pretty good. But yeah, that's basically the store named attribute node in a nutshell. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this kind of content. I'll be making some more in the future. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.